All right, Lane, what happened last time? Ooh, what did it so? What happened? <laughs> we started our journey with our entourage, new entourage. I can't find my notes, actually. Um, so was it Helmer's got his knights? We went and I've got their names and stuff. And we got our, we started our travel to try to get to Tharnland's people. And Tharnland was still a little mad at us because we didn't, uh, Edward and Ratbite opened up about their uh, reason for being here and potential as foreign agents sent, sent to hunt down what happened to the dwarves. Uh, Tharnland was a little upset that he didn't get uh, briefed on that, and he's still a little bitter. Um, but we have our new company, um, including knights of Rebic and uh, Griff's Bluff, now under the leadership of Countess Yestra. Um, Helmer, I believe, is leading the knights as the new kind of de facto... Well, he, he's, he's a new big guy in the in the knightly order there. Um, on, our tr on our way, we were heading... East, I believe, to the to and northeast and all that to the dwarves of, of what's the name of the of Tharland's place. We were passing through. Well, on the way we. Karn Boldar, Karn Boldar. Yeah, Karn Boldar. Yeah. Um, on the way, Edward managed to to play some some songs, sing some songs about our little group to get everybody in good spirits. Uh, there was. There was potential for some uh, infighting and other issues, especially with Tharlin and other people's interpersonal issues. Uh, but in large part, thanks to the uplifting of the spirits and maybe a little bit of a charm uh, from Edward, everybody managed to get along for the most part. And let's see, is that when we passed through a bunch of goblins in the road? There's some sort of beastmen or chaos something or other there are tracks everywhere yeah they Goblin slaughtered pieces. that old dude they slaughtered that guy that we yeah. had, had the sword before yeah or, or rather his, wherever his place was mm -hmm. we managed to get so we were on alert but we managed to get through there without anything jumping us um we got a little you know, like i said a little farther uh, they managed to really kind of get pretty lucky i believe on the traveling so we didn't have any major uh incidents with anything trying to eat us or anything so that was nice um i'm sure i'm missing something but eventually we got to the dwarven not carnival dur right there's the or there's the no, there's, not a thang i want to keep saying thangorodrim because that's the name of the uh <laughs> morgoth's ancient stronghold in the silmarillion yeah. but i know that's not it <laughs> it's something yeah. close to it though yeah, and uh, my notes are all out of order, so I don't have uh, somewhere sorry, I've got I'm, much better notes than this. I'm, I'm muted. I, I was saying but, that is it. That the, the Thangora Drim is that is that really a thing in the Silmarillion? I, I don't remember that. I, it's not the same name. It's off by like one syllable. But oh, yeah, wow. Thangor Thangora Drim was the, which is the whatever. I don't want to get a Belvin pedantic on you. Oh, wow. Anyways, <laughs> Th Th Thangorodrim was the uh, ancient first stronghold. Uh, the Iron Maw, I think, is what it means or something like that. But anyways, it's, it, it's Morgoth's it's Morgoth's main stronghold. Oh, wow, okay. In, in, yeah. the, in the frozen north where, like, all the dragons issue from and the orcs in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. And then later it's plundered by the Valar. Well, this place is not nearly. So that luckily, cool. we're not going there. No, it's good to not. It's good to not be going there. Yeah, that's where the Iron yeah. Crown resides, uh, with the three Silmarils set into it. Yeah. Anyways. We're going to another going to a different place. That <laughs> yeah. We exactly. hadn't gotten there yet because as we got to Dwarven territory, we were getting ready to the, on the river. We wanted to cross the river to get continue on our way to Carnvaldar. We, we did come across some uh, dwarven 
uh, uh, guards. What do you, uh, they're essentially like I'm not dwarven rangers, but they're kind of the the well keeping watch and keeping the riffraff out. And apparently we're a riffraff because they we didn't because we can't pay them what 300 gold or something. Is it three? 300 gold they wanted for passage and we realized we bought we have all this equipment we managed to get all this weapons and fancy you know make sure we were all decked out with any armor and weapons we want what we conspicuously forgot to bring was gold which they want 300 gold to let us let us pass uh we realized we couldn't do that we don't want to make enemies of the dwarves by trying to like you know fight through them or sneak past or anything because that could backfire we've already got some some elves with this which are it's a t- tenuous situation if if the elves get uh too much attention from the dwarves here so that's kind of where we we left it we realized well we can't keep going we have to go we can go back to the dwarven city and try and get make some money we had a couple of options for where we, how we might go about that. We thought we could go in the city and try and just raise some money there. We could, deck, you know, do what urban city stuff in the dwarven place. But having uh, spent a lot of time in new settlements that didn't get us where I think we decided, you know what? There's <laughs> they got mines around here. Let's go. Let's go delving too deep and see what we can get for money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And yeah. I, uh, essentially, that's where we left it. I think. So I'll move, kind of pan the camera over there in a second, uh, but um, this decision you all made that you're like, hey, we're going to go in one of the dwarven delves uh, that has been left abandoned. Um, what's about to happen is based on that decision. Okay. So um, you, uh, you turn around from the guards and on horseback, you're able to travel, I can't remember what it is, like 48 miles a day. So, like, you're able to basically traverse the map. Um, so, going from the gates, the gatehouse, the, the the place where they're keeping the way into the Gem Throne Forest uh, with the, the Dwarven Guards, you decided not to engage in skullduggery and try to either kill them or outwit them or evade them or anything like that. You're like, no, we're going to play it. With it. We're going to keep our nose clean and we're going to try to do that approach. So you turn around on the road and you return uh, to um, where you saw before. Um, you could see because you started out on up in the mountains and you came down into the foothills. So when you came down into this valley, you could see a festering, nasty brown river snaking its way to the north. And on the other side was a scorched wasteland, um, which makes no sense because on the other side is a verdant kind of alpine forest. Um, And then you could see from where you were even this huge city sitting on the river and a a great bridge crossing it. So um, you turn around on the road and head back that way. You might be having internet issues. No, he said he was gonna. I know he said he, he was having that. Um, and um, you make it um, until you come to where you see the the riverfront. This is a very wide river, and you can see this massive bridge complex. Uh, this this thing is huge, probably hundreds of feet wide and nearly a fraction of a mile long. And it just looks like, um, let me see if I can describe what this stuff looks like. Even from here, you can see it. It's a, it says, it's a magnificent ruin, really. A dilapidated monstrosity of empty towers and echoing halls stacked onto each other. Um, it spans across two great cliffs uh, with four great arches, this huge bridge with a, a gatehouse on the near side of it, uh, of the bridge. And um, there's a, basically, um, it looks like there are just these ramshackle buildings, these uh, things that have just been stacked on and on, on, on top of each other. 
um, until it's just this hive of old, crumbling wooden buildings. This place looks and smells like a slum even from a quarter of a mile away as you approach on horseback. Now, before you get there um, and face a new set of guards, Tharnland turns to you, based on your plan and your discussion as a group, turns to you and he says, You remember what I said about being direct, being straight and honest with these dwarves? Saying it like it is. So we yes. should do that, right? I recall. That was the plan, right? <laughs> yes. Forget everything I said. Let's not do that at all. So, yeah, it's more Stay here. Go over there into the shrubs. Don't show yourselves to any passerbys, and I'll be back in several hours. Congratulations, everybody. But, uh, you don't have to tell me to hide. <laughs> Rat bite is more than happy to. Uh, Everybody else want to hide? Can you tell us why? Well, uh... Don't hurt yourself, Russ. We understand. You got bronchitis. You don't have to do the dwarf while you have, have a... bronchitis. Nobody got time for that? I have a, uh... I have a... a, a well, um... I've had some of my own business here. Uh, sort of worked in this town and, um... Some people here know me, and if you don't want to get involved in city matters here, you'll not be wanting to just ride up to the front gate. I see. Well, I, we definitely don't, so so be it. Very Knights well. to the shrub. Yeah, so you all like hang around in the shrubs for a while, and, and um, eventually um, it gets dark. Um, and, um, he, uh, he comes back with a hooded dwarf and a, um, oh, what do you call the, the Robin Hood colored, uh, I can't remember what that, that type of green is colored. A but. drab? No drab? It's not drab. There's like, it's named like after a town in England, uh. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. Um, he's got a dyed... Nottingham? Uh, I can't remember. Um, what is that called? He, he comes back and he's got um, a cloak on. Uh, this, this other dwarf still has a beard. You know, the, he still looks like a dwarf. Um, this one with an auburn beard and big bushy eyebrows. Um, and uh, comes back and... Uh, uh, Tharnlin says, uh, "This is uh, this is a uh, a business associate of mine for some work I've done here uh, in the past. His name is Harnul. Um, Harnul is like so. You want to make your way into the mound, huh? Don't want to go through the front gate. Correct. Yeah, if that's where the money is. Well." You'll have to pay the fees, and it's up front to get in, and once you get in, you'll have to speak to the boss. Tarlin, you explained our situation. We didn't have the money to pay the toll. I hope the fee isn't as much or as more than the toll. That's kind of what brings us here in the first place, is the whole paying fees, yeah. Harnell says, it's 20 gold. That's On this short of notice... And with that many boats, also you'll have to you'll have to leave your horses, and you'll have to come out here and and collect your horses. But they should be safe, unless something eats them. When he says twenty gold pieces, uh, Elmer makes the the cloth knife. <laughs> oh goodness! Yes, wonderful. Okay. Yes. Very well. Uh, we'll have to wait until night falls completely, and then uh, we'll get our boats. All right. I've got 50. Who's got... How do we want to... We want to split it up a little bit? I have 16, I believe. Okay. 
No, I have 21. Sorry. Mm. 21 pieces. All right. Um, written down. So if everybody does five pieces, five, 10, yeah. 15, 20. Yeah. All right. Beauty. All right. Uh, let's see here. Night falls completely. And uh, it's utterly dark, and you can hear the uh, the night creatures in, among the, the pine forests nearby. As you get closer, this place smells. And it's still, you can hear the noises of mangy wild dogs in the streets barking and howling at night. Uh, every once in a while, something, a screeching cat, a yelling voice, uh, a scuffle. And uh, some of the, uh, the windows still lit by tallow light. Um, some need for light, even at height here in this place. Um, it is not a cozy or sleepy place. And so uh, you make it to the waterfront. And uh, there is this section of rocky eddies. Um, and uh, you get to the water. And he has several boats. And Harnell says, uh, now look here. You don't want to touch this water. And all father help you, you don't want to drink it. If you fall in, if anyone falls into this water, you might as well leave them. Because they found their grave. Again, I have to ask why. Something happened. Uh, it might be something better to talk about once you get to the inn. Uh, I'm imagining hanging out here at night isn't the best place to try to tell you. But anybody in the inn will tell you what happened uh, to the uh, to the fog ruin in years past. So be it. Um, we'll be very careful. You are very careful getting into the boats. You notice that the water has a almost oily, viscous quality to it. Um, the whole place smells. Um, it has a kind of amber, silty quality. Um, not entirely just brown or brackish, uh, but as if something has suffused the water. And um, you have to work hard against the water to move the boat through it. It does not glide easily. Um, but uh, your arms are sore and tired as he uh, he has a sconce that he puts behind the lead boat. And uh, you follow this bobbing sconce in the night along the waterfront until he makes it to a rocky outcropping. And uh, you all disembark and uh, gather your things apart from your horses. And anything you can't carry uh, within reason... You know, like, you shouldn't have, like, more than 10 or 15 items. Uh, you can't have, like, you know, 20 rations or something on you right now. That should be with your horses. Um, but uh, you snake your way up the outcropping. And uh, you find a, uh, a place that is lit. That he And he opens an old wooden door. And it is still playing music inside as the place is still alive and lit at night. He um, motions toward a table. He says, Welcome to the Bent Coin Inn. Pride of the mound and the cat yard. My uh, employer, she'll be with you soon. I think she's eager to talk to you. Hey, you're gonna hear what she has to say, and also, yeah, what's up with that water? <laughs> ah, yes. The, uh, in other parts, uh, the, the natives, they turn, it looks at, uh, and you already know all this, Alara, but looks at Alara and says, the natives looks at you and says it like that. They call it the Sergili. Elven word or something. We call it the Fard Ruin. Fard Ruin is the 
is the river that bisects the north and south of the evening lands from the, the lands, the blasted lands of the east, where the Unmen reside, where the human arch traitor took all of his mutant chaos men in the war against the traitor 20 years ago. This fortress here uh, at uh, uh, Castle Forcrot. It's the last fortress that held against the swarms of unmen that poured across the river. But there was a, a disaster. Um, it, uh, let me see here. Um, there was a volcano in the mountains, Mount Fireborn. When it erupted, uh, this, this, ru this, 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 the fard ruin, it became all of this strange silt and mud, uh, this yellow amber mud. Anything that touches it dies. It's a handy thing. It's kept the Unmen out. But you've seen what they've done to the other side of the river, so maybe it's for the best. <laughs> Maybe. No. We have some experience with nasty water, but uh, that's a new one, yes. Yeah. Aye. It seems cursed. Anyone that touches it comes down, changes, and dies. Even the Unman. That's terribly uncomfortable and disturbing, this. As you, uh, he goes and sits at the table, if you keep talking to him, and, um, two, uh, tavern winches actually bring out food and drinks that you didn't ask for. Um, uh, you know, it seems like, uh, you were expected, uh, by whoever Tharnland had set all of this up with, or rather, uh, Harnel as a second order of effect to it. And so you have some uh, some some ale in front of you, and uh, some uh, very dry bread, which you can see a bit of spots of mold on, but nothing you can't pick off, you know, if you want. Um, anyways, um, while you wait, is there anything else that you want to do? If we're uh, dungeon delving, we should probably go over who's. Uh... Who's got what? I've got four slots after armor, shield, and rations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got a ton of stuff on the horses, so we got plenty of stuff to pick through if, uh, if nobody else wrote yeah. stuff down. <laughs> well, I've got a 10 foot pole, I've got rope, <laughs> um, a mirror. Lantern, grappling hooks, spikes, and stakes and mallet. All right, good. I I also have rope, and yeah. I have a ten foot pole. I got some oil, at least one flask of oil, and a lantern, and I got thieves tools. If, if it comes yeah. down. To it. I've got way too many. I got I have twenty oil flasks in my inventory, but because of how I've recorded them, I'm hesitant to actually reduce that number on my sheet so i'm gonna have to ask like how many am i actually carrying like it's do you uh, think ross for oil it was one bottle per uh, per slot per slot okay yeah, yeah. oh yeah we had the house bullets. rule about slots and i like that rule to be honest i actually am pretty well a fan of just slots um, um, so. i'm not familiar right. with that one I think uh, I said that you could have 10 items that you began with. So on a basic level, I'm using the basic encumbrance. which So basic encumbrance, it's actually one of my favorite rules in Old School Essentials. You only have, like, setting aside these armor categories, you only have two categories. Um, you're either with treasure or without treasure. If you're if you're with treasure, meaning you're carrying a bunch of stuff, whatever that is, you are significantly slowed. It's um, about 
60 or 70 percent your speed and if you go slower that's a death spiral in a dungeon like you're losing torches and light and food and time and monsters are appearing and you're you know so like um so anyways i think i said that basically you could carry 10 items maybe it was 15 you all correct me uh, i think i said 10 though i think it was 10 yeah yeah, yeah i've got it in 10 if, pack. It, if you embark on an adventure with 10 items, you are not with treasure. And the reason for that is that I didn't have to kind of like make a constant judgment call of like, what if I have five oil flasks or what if I have 20 torches or what I did constantly decide what was treasure and what wasn't. So basically I'm saying you have 10 items and, and some items can be bundled and it's whatever the book says. So in old school essentials, arrows can be bundled crossbow bolts, torches, iron spikes, uh, seven days of rations are a bundle. And so they just take one slot. But, you know, a weapon, um, a uh, like an extra weapon, because I think I said weapons and armor don't count. But if you have oh. an extra, if you have an extra weapon, that will be a slot of its own. Um, an oil flask, I think I said, is its own slot. Um, yeah, water, a, a water skin is its own slot, and you have to have a water skin or else you suffer penalties. Um, Backpacks and sacks didn't count. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, that helps. I don't have that much on me then. I have a rope, torches, and then I have like some random stuff I picked up for flaming arrows, but it could be used also for torches or leaving light sources. Is resin from trees and cloth bits. And I have an oil flask on me. We'll say those are all different slots. If you don't have a water skin and seven days of rations. I do. You, okay, great. You'll win at least that. Um, and then um, I'll tell you all just quickly. And you don't have to worry about their inventory. This Unless you die and then you can take over one of these characters. But Tharnlin, Knob, and Squints do not have anything of note. They're not like equipment mules. So they just have a weapon, which is a standard D6 weapon. Knob and Squints have short swords and Tharnlin has an axe. Adoralon has some interesting things. He has three oil flasks that he uses as grenades, uh, a long sword okay. and a long bow. Uh, uh, and a long bow. Um, he ha and then Captain Ayana has a lance which apparently says it's a cr close quarters weapon when it's not on charge on a mount. But uh, it has a special feature when she's mounted. She has a long sword and a short bow. And I think all the knights have that. They have a lance, short bow, and, lo and long sword. So one of the things none of you have, which is unfortunate, unless you picked it up when you left, is no one can currently attack from the second rank. And I don't know if lances can do that. I mean, oh, no spears. I will if not. They... I will not say they can do that unless the book says it can do that. So I'll check. I'll check. But I don't think I have it up here on this SRD thing. I don't think it never says. I don't think it says anywhere that they can. Those are pole arms, but I mean, it's because to me that's because the assumption is they are always used from horseback. So second rank doesn't mean anything. And the same as why they don't count as two-handed weapons, even though you'd clearly have to use two hands to use one if you weren't mounted. Well, actually... Um, oh, Lance. Sorry, I was wrong thing. So this is actually interesting, and I, I like it uh, a lot. Um, I like... So Swords and Wizardry is, like, cr crunchy. It's a crunch... Honestly, it's a crunchy game. This is not... Uh, it doesn't tell you very much. Um, and... Uh, there is no category in old school. I have it up here. Right? There is no category in old school essentials for reach. What you would say in five E. There's no reach weapon. <coughs> There's nothing about any category, including pole arms. Now they have other features, but none of them talk about attacking from the second rank. I, however, like that. So, regardless of if it's a combat rule. I'm going to rule that you all can do it. And I'll say that lances can do it because it's not mentioned. 
So that means all of your knights can attack from the second rank. Awesome. So Helmer's carrying a lantern. He's got torches, tinderbox, rations, and water skin. He's got one oil and holy water. I'm going to ask right now what your... Oh, I don't want that. What is your order of march? And I'm going to... Lance, back when we had that battle, but I assume I left it with the horse because I wouldn't want to be, you know, weighed down with it. It's up to you. You know, I'll say that you could have put it in the boat if you wanted. It's this tavern, by the way, when you enter it. I, I hope the image was sufficient. That's kind of the, the, the mode of it. It's mostly dwarves, but of interest, you also see humans. Um, and uh, it does look like these are... Some of them are cell swords. Like, some of these people are... Maybe ne'er do wells. This is a uh, this is a slummy place, and so having a bunch of people come in with a bunch of weapons is not outside of the purview of this place. Yeah. So what uh, what's the order of march? Like who's in your front rank? I you think have ten people. I think we talked about having some of the people with. Infravision both in front and in the back. Okay. Or I assume you want to put your wrong. dwarf in front. Because um, he's got infravision, he's armored, um, he's tough. He's kind of the tank of the whole group. He, like his kit, he's the whole time he's like been taking all the hits. Yeah, man, he's been around. Uh, have about anyone? And this is. He helped us take down one. that troll back in the day. Okay, so I put Tharnlin up front. He has infravision. He's also able to detect sloping passageways and things about... He can do dwarfy things, so that's handy. Um, if it's two by two, Helmer will go beside him. And my thought is, like, you can go two by two because that's the worst case scenario, and then you can kind of fold up from your remaining ranks if, if you... Like, if you tell me who's in preceding ranks, those will go up first, and that'll be your first rank, right? So, okay, Helmer's up front then... That makes sense because he ought to lead the way with all the knights. Nob and, and then... Squint should be in the middle because they need protection. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Yeah, they're like little hobbits. And then you got your the elves are actually pretty squishy. Um, that's a thing about elves and wizards. Um, so it's the we're squishy, but we have night vision. So if we're like layered, maybe with some of the knights, that might we can help keep an eye out, but. Not go squish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you and want me to, uh, to put like several of the knights kind of behind the front rank then as kind of the people that would spread out into a front rank? And then you have the second rank then. They're kind of like your phalanx then. Is that, do you kind of want to do that? And then you're kind of like in command of them. Um, that sounds really cool. <laughs> Captain Ayana, what does she have? She she has all the same stuff. She's not a knight, you know. She's a a, a Rebecian. Okay. Um, and I and I, I'll just put like four of them there. Okay, so I got, you know, Helmer and Tharnlin, and then four knights, and the Rebecian has the same loadout, and then we still have like four ranks left. So. And then I put the hobbits there in the middle, and then and then who do we want the elves or do we want Lane, uh, Ben and Edward? Do you all want to be in the back? You could put a elf in the back so that someone with infravisions in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Edward's I not. In the back. Okay. I'm not exactly squishy, but I'm also I don't carry a shield. Um. You know, I do have that awesome sword, but uh, we could it, put you it, in the back so that if something attacks from the back, you could still fight. And the yes. reason I say that is, if you don't, you won't be able to fight. Um, well, I have a I have a bow. Okay, I have a, I have a bow also. Would you but, rather uh, use your bow? Because there's no uh, penalty in this game. It's not like swords and wizardry. There's no fire into groups. I mean, I'll use whatever the occasion demands. 
most of the time I imagine I'll be using a bow just because I'm not, you know, there's people with better armor class than me. But Okay. And that is not me, so I will also be, I figured I'll be with the hobbits. Gotcha. In that general area. All right. I kind of have it, how it would fan out and how it would go in a short corridor. So there's your order of march. We figured out your equipment. You all are talking about your plans, checking your equipment and everything, and doing all this stuff that you have learned to do in your adventures when a woman approaches your table. Um, you can see that there are, he there are some heavily armed guards uh, with her. She's got some muscle uh, with her. Um, it's a... Um, uh, a dwarven woman. Um, dwarven women in this world don't have beards. Um, and she says, Well, well, well. Welcome to the mound. My uh, my old associate, uh, uh, Thornland, says that you're looking to go into one of the old delves. This has got good salvage. That's what we're aiming for. Something we can sell. Anyone crazy enough to go into one of the old delves is bound to find something valuable. But most of us have learned better than to ever try to do that. Although, it just so happens that I know something interesting going on lately. And it might even involve some more coin. So it turns out, I think I know where one of the delves is that is full of treasure. Well, do tell. Oh, I will. I will do tell. But you should know about a uh, mayor of this part of town. And we do have fees here, so you'll have to pay those if you want to do business in this town, just like anyone. Edward sighs deeply. Everywhere we go, taxes. Yep. Well, <laughs> if, if you do know of a, a delve with, I assume, maybe that's a little bit of the skimming off the top is that is that what i'm understanding it be for uh a good salvage would that be amenable to oh yes and not only that but thornlin uh i uh i know about your troubles and i sympathize really the gentry here, they're becoming quite overbearing with their taxes and fees, if you ask me. But you can't blame a businesswoman like myself. I have to pay taxes and fees, and I have to get by. So she puts a piece of parchment on the table, and she's like, The first day's visitor's tax, that'll be five gold. Secondly, it's not required... She looks to the guards, looks back to you. But it is customary to give me a gift on my birthday. Those usually cost five gold. Edge taxes, points to all your weapons. That's five gold per edge, bringing it into town. And then the, you had horses out of town, didn't you? You came in on horses. It's five gold per hoof. Hoof. Per, per horse or per, per hoof? It's a pony tax. You have to pony up. I see what you did there, and I like it at the same time as not, but yes. That's right. I like it. Well, I hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you have to agree. But don't worry. We'll put it on credit just for a modicum 
of interest. I think What's... everybody <laughs> springs and starts going through the front. Okay, yeah, so let's see what we got here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we'll pay, the, you know, I'll, I'll pay the visit, the first time visitors tax. It's five gold total, right? Yeah. Five gold per person. Per person. Yeah. Oh, okay. Elmer will pay for that too. Yeah. So I guess we basically so. need five per edged weapon and then five per horse and five for per, per hoof. So it's, oh, uh, beer. 20 gold per hey, horse. I've so yeah. it's 200 gold. I'm already down to eight gold. And I like, can't afford she, my she says, she more she says, to go. Don't worry, don't worry. I am sympathetic <laughs> to your plight. It can all yeah. be put on interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid it all up. I just paid it all. I'm down to ten. I paid it all for myself anyway. I'm down to ten gold pieces. All right. From, from, from easy come, easy go, right? It was the 50 that I had left over from everything that was lost. Now, I assume you have some more gold, sir, because you'll want to consider that it is a gold piece per night here at the Bent Coin. It includes food the night before and the morning of. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, toss her a gold piece before she finishes her sentence. <laughs> and look away from her as I'm clearly not interested in hearing any more about how much I owe. And over. there's the there's the matter of the delve that you're interested in. You see, me being a concerned citizen, I found an elven ranger in the poorest of shape. I was quite worried about her. Well, my men found her, and so we took her in and gave her a room here at the inn. Um, she was uh, down in the, the hamlet of Restonford. And they have had a terrible time, it seems. Something coming out of the ground nearby. Coming up from the earth. Terrorizing the town. Taking horses. Killing livestock. Killing some of the villagers. And apparently this good elven ranger was trying to protect them. And she fell quite wounded and she did not succeed. And so she is in a room here at the Bent Coin. And someone will need to pay her fees. Why us, if I may ask? Well, she knows where the delve is. Oh. <laughs> and her fees are? She gets out her piece of paper. Extravagant. First day's visitor's taxes, five gold pieces. Edward throws his hands up and walks away from the it's table. It's <laughs> not required, but it is my birthday. And, you know, talks about that. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the medical expenses... And she's had my, a room here my, for three I'll nights. Walk, I'll, I'll walk back and ask. Uh, first of all, are there any musicians playing at the moment? I can hear it on the track we're hearing, but are there any musicians in the place playing at the moment? Um, yeah, but you know, you can easily find like a break in that, or uh, like, what is your goal to try to? What is your goal with the performance in particular? Well, my first question was going to be how much performed music is worth. <laughs> Right, yes. Uh, I think you're able to look around and tell that uh, you could certainly easily gain the love of people here um, for whatever that's worth and their attention. But you, this is the kind of place where people usually trade in pennies, in, in effect. In fact, um, you came in, you all came in, obviously, like knights in plate armor and Elven Rangers, it's clear to people that like you're a um, an adventuring band, um, and you know, Mayor Fleece is charging you accordingly. Uh, but Mayor these, Fleece, the, yeah, these are the people, Grindelina <laughs> Fleece. These are the people. <laughs> These are people that uh, they trade in copper pennies. They don't. Uh, they don't have gold coins. 
Well, I don't know if I want to make a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, Edward, Edward's in the in a foul mood after interacting with this woman, and uh, <laughs> it's clearly not going to be worth my while to do so, nor make things easier, unless I were to actually try to outright charm her, which I don't really feel like doing. I, I think I'd rather keep a lower profile than that. So. Homer's got four gold pieces left. O's yeah. fifteen. <laughs> yeah, I got nine, and I will I will slap the nine that the the the, the I will slap five of that nine down. And uh, and and in front of her gruffly and say happy birthday. Um. <laughs> oh, that's quite gracious of you. It's been a good birthday indeed, and she takes it, puts it in a small coin per pouch. Uh, so do, I take that to mean that you all have agreed to my deal, that you'll be staying here at the bent coin down in the mound, and you'll be uh, y using the services of my employee, Harnell, to take the boats back and forth as you need. I've already paid for the night, so yes. Very well. Yeah. I think I'm glad to see this arrangement. If there's any business that you'd like to do in town, don't hesitate to ask if there's anything that I can do at all. I'm so... I care about the visitors of our town. And she gets up and she smiles and leaves. Um, and... Uh, she wouldn't be grossly rich without us. The, uh, indeed, um, huh. Does anybody remember, oh, what was the woman's name from DuckTales? She was I thought the, you were going to uh, say Le Miz, is what I thought of, was like, uh, the ones that, like, went around and, but go ahead, DuckTales. Oh, it's man, there was the, 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 oh, the, uh, this, this, the scary, the scary duck lady. But she did that. She's like, oh, this tax, this tax. And one of them was the pleasure of knowing me tax. <laughs> <laughs> really like magic something was the like the, the witch duck in DuckTales. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, Why do I remember that? Parnell, I, I watched he, it like last year. <laughs> he says uh, it's a good idea to get on the good side of Grendelina. She runs things down here in the mound. Um, it's about as safe as you can get in the cat yard. Uh, she's willing to, if you want, I can take you up to see this elf. If you want to talk to her. Did we ever, did we ever find out? Uh, oh, she started, she was adding up all the fees. And what's it cost for this elf? Total? Uh, it's like 20, 25 or something? So the elf does not have a horse, so it'd be five... 10, uh, 15, 20, and then three nights is 23 gold, plus the nights, however long you stay here, plus medical care. So it'd be like 30 gold so far, plus another gold piece per night uh, for however long you do the loop to that you decide to, however much you... 30. Does Adder right. Allen have any gold on him? <coughs> no. None of your companions have gold. Awesome. Oof. Well, I have 15 that I can put towards the care of the ranger and any other expenses. And we can kind of calculate after the fact. We don't have to kind of like bean count it now. I mean, I, okay, I suppose yeah. it looked, it's obvious <laughs> you, you need money, right? Like that's like, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, once we get to where you're getting a lot of money, if that is to happen, then then you, we can start wondering if you've when you want to cut it off. Like when you want to like say, all right, we've got enough money, let's let's move on or let's pay it off or uh, whatever, right? But we'll cross that bridge when we get there, if that's okay. Yeah. You cross the bridge. It's <laughs> <laughs> our whole problem. We can't seem to cross the bridge. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I guess our only lead on money is the elf who's going to cost us more money to try and make some money, so I guess it's 
Let's go see the elf. You uh, well, perhaps you may ideas. know what we're up against too, which could be a. a Let me see if, I don't suppose I have like a. I'll just kind of put a, a little. Um. Little picture here. Let's make it nighttime. This is cool foundry stuff. Like I like that you can like change it to nighttime and stuff like that. And we'll say that you're up here in this, up here in flickering tallow light of, uh, of the Bent Coin Tavern. Lights are still on. The party's still going downstairs, though. And uh, you go up to this, uh, this the, the room, um, and there is a elven woman laying in bed, covered in. Nasty, festering bandages um, from the many wounds and, and scars. You can see digits missing on her hand. She's grievously wounded. Um, Homer is uh, goes goes up to her and, and is, is uh, kind of checking and says, "Oh, they're not too bad." And then he kind of does the lay on hands thing, hoping that nobody notices. Let's see if they do. Let's give her three hit points back. Yeah, let's see if they, uh, um, um, I'm going to duplicate Lara. It's three hit points. Might do it. I'm actually going to see. Um... Let's see. Three hit points. That is not enough, but it is. <laughs> it's not enough to get her to be healed, but it's enough to get her conscious. So that's pretty handy. Well, sorry, it's two hit points per level, so that'd be six. My bad. Okay, six hit points is enough, and you now have a new companion if you want. Uh, but we'll get there in a second. But like this miracle occurs, I'm gonna actually do a wisdom check for your lieutenant. Uh, to see if she notices. It's going to be a uh, versus spells check. And she does not notice. And under the, only the eyes of the thrice blessed, uh, Helmer performs this miracle in, in, in his name. And uh, um, the elf awakens. And Alara, you recognize this elf. Uh, this is Eldrin Pedriel. Uh, and she is a ranger, a Black Oak Ranger, apparently sent on assignment all the way over to the eastern portion of the Evening Lands. And she wakes and she says, Oh, oh Alara? Uh, is that... Uh, Adoralon? And she speaks in Elven and she says... I had thought that I had passed on into the earth to join the remains of the Grass Mother and to be with our ancestors. Well, I hope she didn't have a DNR. What's a DNR? <laughs> no, that's, that's the thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. What do you say, Alara? It is indeed us. We well, heard you were here and came to check on you and ask you some questions. It, Are it, you feeling better? I, strangely, I, I am, although I'm not well. I... Something awful is happening in this place, Alara. Something terrible is happening here, and it's in the Gem Throne Wilderness. And it's coming up from the ground, and it's summoning forth all of the other things that have so far been sleeping across the ages. This is all being said in Elven. What kind of things are coming up? Are we talking of... The dead, or cursed, or something 
altogether unfamiliar. Altogether unfamiliar to our kind. At least for a long time since our people fell. All during the, during the beginning when we came here to these lands. Nearly a thousand years ago. Demons from the abyss. The humans, they had driven them off and defeated them, but they burble up from the abyss now. Something is calling them forth from the tower in the wilderness. There's something wrong with our ancestors' tower. Something has infected it. We indeed are following a flying demon. The captain believes he may have gone to the gem throne wilderness, though we have an errand to do before we are able to pursue any further leads on it. I will tell you the information I have gathered, but I'm afraid I cannot accompany you, for I'm not well. Although I am so happy to see you, I, th I fear that I am bound here with these people for some time. This is not a place that is that likes elves. Please be careful, my kin. And you as well. The... I don't know what this demon is. But... It is warping the, the earth. It is The earth itself is poisoned. Plants grow forth from trees already rotten. And strange creatures pull forth and rip the soil and arise. It calls forth every giant and horrific thing to it. And the dwarves in the north will not last much longer. I think that this will be a hardship for them for, the, for ages now. But if whatever is in that tower is not stopped, they will not last but for more but for a matter of days. Giant spiders, monsters, all sorts of horrific things attack them. They have become like a fortress on their own. They are the last to keep the secrets of the dwarves, the ancestor curse, the shame secret. I would not suggest telling any of your friends here or any of the dwarves in this place or ever talk about the shame secret. But they are the last that act as dwarves do. For better or for worse. Perhaps it is destined that they should pass on. Our people are up there. Our kin. The Aina Norne. They guard the way into the tower. They know its way in. But our ancestors knew things that we don't understand anymore. Something beyond magic. It changes everything. Not just one's mind, but reality. It's what our ancestors were capable of. Is It's beyond anything that we can imagine. It is unlikely that you could survive to even get in that tower. But all of our work will be for nothing if you can't. There is a mound covered by dwarven magic. It is south of the hamlet of Restonford, southwest of here, by about 12 miles. On the west side of the road. One of the nearer hillocks. And it is an ancient mithril dwarven mine. They had tried to reopen it just before the War of the Traitor, but it became a passageway into the Abyss, and some demon rules there now. Monsters and beasts come forth from the mound, and they terrorize the local hamlets. I had tried to do my best to defend Restonford. I failed. You are still here. 
You cannot fail as long as you keep trying. I hope that I heal quickly. And she says, uh, you know, something like, um, you know, as, as long as the soil is here, I will be here until only it is soil. Like, you know, like I'm not going anywhere. Um, and, um, until I'm dead. Um, and, um, that acts as kind of both an admonition and a blessing. Um, and maybe a goodbye. But, uh, And she probably goes to sleep again. So that was a lot of stuff in Elven. <laughs> <laughs> so, did we learn anything, or do we, is does she is she going to charge us money too? All eyes on the elf. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is she does know where the elvish mound is. The bad news is the danger coming from it and surrounding it. She called it the passageway to the abyss and said that a sort of demon rules deep in the mind and that creatures come out and terrorize the locals it is was it south or southwest of here uh south of redenford and southwest of here southwest Southwest of where we're at south of restenford she said it's an ancient elvish mound an ancient mithril dwarven mine but that it is full of danger hmm so we just need money, but I guess <laughs> I guess we should go to this is a mithril mine. That sounds profitable. Nobody's got just like a, a nice mine, but it's just like small monsters and a lot of gold and mithril. That would be nice, but uh Well, I cannot this... guarantee they would be small. That was the other thing. Oh yeah, they sound big, probably. She I'm did guessing. say the creatures that have been coming out of the ground around here, the cursed things not only are similar to the decay that we saw back at Gris Bluff, but that there are giant demonic creatures and spiders okay. and unknown things that have not been known to the elves before that have been coming out of the ground. This is a complicated bridge crossing. <laughs> so they may not be small. But she's yes. not charging us, so at least there is that. Oh yeah. yes, no, that's that's good news. That's very yeah, good. We news. already yes. agreed to pay her way for like however many nights, so um, that's nice. Um, did 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 she aware that we're paying her bill? But it, it doesn't matter. That's fine. I don't think she was aware enough of what's going on or how long she has been here. I mean, we can hardly hold that against her. I mean, I. But uh, you know, when we get back, maybe we can clear up later. Yeah, perhaps the uh, uh, these tales she told you of demons and spiders was just uh, uh, con- concussion-induced illusions and, and imaginings, and ah, probably not. All right. <laughs> Wishful thinking, but it is not common for rangers to exaggerate or spin creative tales as some humans do, and... I fear that her reports are accurate. Oh, that's uncalled for, but perhaps, like, just a little <laughs> exaggeration? That'd be nice. Uh, well, I guess that's our lead, then. We go to a horrible mound full of demons and try to get some mithril or something and pay her away so that we can go to the other place full of horrible demons that we're on a mission to stop. So... Maybe it's practice for the tower, or I don't know. I got nothing, but 
we're here. We get that's what we're here for, right? And to think we get to pay the dwarves for the pleasure of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Well then, we best get up to rest as best we can and get it over. Yep. Um, rest as fast as you can so we don't have to pay any more money for resting. While you were discussing all of this in the tavern, uh, two different people approach you um, at different points. No! Um, I know, right? You can say that. <laughs> You can say that one of them it seriously approaches. He's a like, and he's a human man. He's an old man. He comes up. He's like, adventurers. I can see it. Your adventurers. I have. I need uh, of adventures. I need help. As as he's doing that, as like we're kind of walking away, uh, <laughs> yeah, he says, "Need help." Helmer kind of stops and goes like. <laughs> Edward, yeah, Edward, Edward just puts his hand, puts his face Hold in on. his hands. Maybe with consultation fee. Maybe you know. <laughs> he hears you. He's like, you I have I have seven copper. <sighs> Keep your copper, old man. What is it you need help with? Uh, <laughs> the, um... I, I, I look at all the others and shrug my shoulders. <laughs> And I and I and I make and I smile and make the sign of the three to Helmer. Can't help the thing this may have been prophesied last week. <laughs> he looks around nervously because um, he does not fit in here. Like this is like a scoundrel's tavern, and he's some random poor old man. He's like, I I'm sorry to bother you, but I see you're the adventurous type, and I need people of such experience. To head into Bridgetown, because um, I uh, my name is Gustan Druken, and uh, we traded here in well, what is Thangara Drum when it was Bridgetown, back when the humans held this city before the war, uh, before the river rose as well, and it was a prosperous river town. And we even traded east to west. Why, people would come from Damarung, leagues away. Uh, but anyways, you see, I um, uh, some unsavory characters have raided my family's premises, and things were taken, including a family's prized possession. Uh, it's an heirloom of no real great worth but uh, but is personal to me uh, I, I hope you forgive me and out of character and in character I have a scratchy voice he has a scratchy voice he, he says I hope you'll forgive my scratchy voice I, I, I believe this relic was lost but I've come to believe that a man who now own uh, who heads the gilded goat gang in relic street and he's basically like leading you into a giant like intrigue about what's going on into the city and how all these things were stolen and like you know this all these crime entities involved and stuff and uh i will keep going but as he's talking i want to see um the elves in the group can roll a d6 a two and six to sense so sense something what could be happening here? Rat bites a thief. Is he? Is he, is, is anything? Yeah, like no, I like that too. Yeah, you can also you can roll a d6 and on a on a three and six because you're a very high level as well. And then Alara, let me know what you get. I got a one. Okay, cool. And then Ben, also, I, it might be like a different one. thing that you would notice. I also rolled a one. Okay, so you both noticed different things. Um, and I'll start with Ben. Um, you notice that um, what would Ben notice? I, I, I don't usually do this. 
but not only am I stumped, but I feel like it's a Ben thing. If you knew that someone was getting something over on you in Moonthrone in a situation like this, what would you notice? Well, as far as like getting something over, is it more of like uh, like he's like sneaking up somebody behind, sending somebody, distracting him while no, somebody else does no, something? No, just that this quest is a scam. He's a scam. He's a oh. scam artist. Yeah, that was honestly my first thought. I was like, it seemed I was like, oh, you just happened to be be you used to be rich, and someone stole your. I mean, it's the Nigerian prince kind of concept, you know. It's like yeah, classic scammer stuff, right? Yeah. How does big, I, how, my family yeah. used to have all sorts of money, but then they, we were we our fortune was lost, and then some these thieves stole it. So like, okay, you're trying to get us to steal from thieves because you want their money. Um, that would be, I mean, that honestly, that was my first thought <laughs> as far like as a thief. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, noticed I'm that. I'm sure you just happened to be rich before and now someone else stole your stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Lara, you notice something different. First of all, this man's eyes are sunken, black sockets. Um, Although other parts of him do seem like an elderly man, and he seems to scratch at his arm. But you see just slightly under the cloak with your elven eyes, you can see that there's a kind of black necrosis on his arm. Um, this, and in, in being an elf, this is the most important thing. You sense something magical about this person. Um... He is not what he appears to be. Um, I'm probably going to make sure immediately that Knob and Squints are scooted backwards, and my stance would immediately become slightly more defensive. Not like an outright trying to pick a fight, but I'm trying to... Put myself in a defensive stance in case I need to do something. Okay. And probably make eye contact with Adoralan or some of the others in the group to just kind of. He he will keep to be on guard. He he doesn't notice you doing that, and he'll keep giving his pitch. He'll he'll say that uh, the heirloom was a silver bracelet, it adorned with an elvish script, worthless really, but. Uh, yes, I want it back. He no doubt wears it like a king, like a crown. If you can do this, then I have a means of paying, but not now. I, I can insure 50 gold apiece. By my word. How, though? Hmm. I mean... I'm sure you're completely trustworthy, friend, I know, but I mean, we, we have a lot of business to do, so there, some sort of a deposit might be, you know, in order, I would, in, for, you know, is this second story work? Let's just cut to the chase. What kind of, you know, what kind of job we talking about here? This, but, uh... I don't know... Go ahead. I don't know if the voice change was intentional when you went, I want it back. But that certainly made Helmer like, oh, okay, what just happened there? <laughs> so here's what Rat Bite, to be fair, is kind of, I don't, he may not, you're not sure if he, he wouldn't be sharing this openly with the group at this point, but his thought process is, oh, okay, this guy's clearly a thief who's wanting us to rob some other thieves. Let's string him along and see, you know, that Rat Bite would be kind of like playing along to see if, you know, he, to get the information to steal it with no intention of actually selling right. it back to this guy. Yeah, he's, he it sounds say, like it's worth money. Yeah, he, he says, I only have seven copper pennies for now, and I had hoped to spend it on food tomorrow, but I will give you my seven copper pennies if you agree to help me get the bracelet. And I get my family's estate back, then many things will be set in order. I mean, as much as I would love to help you get your family fortune back, because I know you deserve it. The seven, we, we, we've got it. We've got some hungry mouths to feed. I'm over. I've kind of 
motion to the hobbits, like all sad, like look at these starving kids, sort of vibe. <laughs> you <laughs> you see, hungry you mouths see, be seven copper is just not gonna cut it. I'm sorry. You see all the kind of like pitifulness just drain from his face, and then he turns around and walks away. Yeah. Homer looks at everybody. What just happened? Nothing I want to be involved in. And then, but wouldn't this be a good Ben adventure someday? Like, wouldn't this be some good Ben <laughs> stuff? Yeah, I if, know. If, 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 I mean, had circumstances been other than what they have been the last <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30 days of Edward's life, he might have loved the I, the sound of it. But yeah. at the moment, it's this guy's trouble. Um, and oh, then man. another man approaches the table. Okay. He, uh, la, 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 another, la, la, another old sits. beggar man? No, someone. It's a human, and he's very well dressed, very well dressed. Um, and uh, his I like um, pocketed that last guy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, um, "Good evening." Uh, I couldn't help but notice that you had spoken to um, to our uh, our beloved uh, Mayor Fleece. Yes. I yeah. I couldn't help but overhear that you have had some um, some financial difficulties. Uh, I, please forgive me uh, for the impropriety, but I sort of specialize in financial matters, you see. And I know that you're going into a, a dwarven uh, delve nearby. I must admit to you that uh, most of the people here will find you insane to do that. Most people that chase dwarven treasure and go into the delves never return. It's your choice, of course, but I wanted to offer. I represent a group of people in town uh, here in uh, what was once called uh, Bridgetown. And uh, the people I represent pay handsomely if you would work for us instead. It would just be minor work about the city, setting various things in order. No doubt still needing the expertise you have with those blades at your side. But for a fraction of the danger, you could have all of your debts paid. Oh, yes, you see, but we are, we are simply passing through. Uh, we've run into some, some, some difficulties and... Uh, uh, we're simply Frank, passing through. Thank you very much yes, for your time. Yeah. And, and, and furthermore, we're familiar with the kinds of issues that need to be set in order within city walls. I see. Those are, those are not the kinds of issues that we wish to entangle ourselves with. Of we course. Simply, we simply need to go forward with our business. Of course, thank, of course. Thank you. Yes, you're, you're, he gets ready to stand up. It's not, you know, um, he pulls back his chair. Your adventures and... You plan to go into the delve. I wish you the best. Uh, I am Baldrus, Baldrus von Octum. Anyone in town will know my name. And if you ask for me, you will find me. He gets up and leaves. I stand and bow slightly. Uh, Thonlin and uh, uh, Arnold, tell us, what, what do you know about this Baldrin guy? Uh, and And... That, that that dwarf he's left um you know harnell um oh i thought he was i thought he was so hanging out Har with harnell i don't know what to call it there's probably there's a word for this but he's a smuggler uh and he's sm he will smuggle you in and out of town uh which is probably the big thing you're paying for is you're paying to circumnavigate the officials and go straight into the slums uh to have a place to sleep and eat and recuperate and repair and get supplies so, whenever you're ready, you can find um, you can you, you you can find Harnell, and Harnell will smuggle you out of the city. So, but he's not here now. But Tharnwin, he says, I, I know uh, I've heard of everyone here has, knows who Baldrus von Octon is. He uh, represents a, a group. It leans in called the Shadow Mark. It's a, a syndicate. Uh, of actually of different dwarven groups say they have connections to the dwarves down in Rebic. Well, 
Oh. <coughs> Desperate. <laughs> Let's hope we never get that desperate, right? He, he, uh, uh, the Shadow Mark, uh, they, um, they, um, could just be business, uh, but it also could be, um, something bigger. I don't know. Uh, well, my friends, I, I, I... I think perhaps it might be best that we retreat to our uh, lodgings so as not to attract any more conversation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, the night passes and uh, you'll awaken the next day. Um, and um, the sun rises uh, over the stinking, festering city that is. And, uh, Thangara Droom and the uh, the bridge across to the eastern lands. And um, what is the plan for the day, um, Ben? Is it to uh, summon Harnel and go across and try to find the mound? Anybody else got any other ideas? We clearly don't want to take those jobs from those... <laughs> those... People, shady people. We're not going to hunt them down. No change. Nobody changes their mind in the night. I take it. Uh, so, unless anybody's got any other ideas, I say let's get out of here. Don't drink the water and see if we get eaten by demons. Right? Let's skadoodle. Right. You do not have to mark off a ration for um, for either the previous day or for this day because you had both dinner and breakfast. Although it's terrible, um, the ale is good, but the food is awful. Um, and um, yeah, you don't have to mark off a ration unless you get out into the wilds and have to. It's so bad he hits it with this magic spoon to make it taste more bland. Oh yeah, that's right. You have your <laughs> magic spoon. You can actually kill flavor with it, which is actually really handy. I'm telling you, this is like <laughs> yeah. the bin place, you know, like this is. Uh, yeah. He's like, it's a shit. I mean, I appreciate you guys don't want to stay here, but it could be a lot of fun. Every Someday, like I have this whole setting, right? So like this, this to me would be like the Fofford and the Gray Mauser area, right? Like you could just do stuff yeah. all the time. Um, but uh, all right, let me move these off the map so I don't have to see them uh, for now. Can I move? And let's get rid of these. Come on. Oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> Cooperation is mandatory. Yes. All right. And then I don't know what that is, but I'm going to get rid of that too. All right. Um, wilderness. Uh, decide your direction of travel. You have a road um, and you receive directions. So um, there is no chance of getting lost in this game because um, you have a road uh, and you have your horses back uh, and you um, you simply take the road to Restonford. You notice these places have human names. Um... But shy of Restonford, you see the uh, um, uh, a, a, a water course that's running south into a big open river, kind of river valley, miles across. And about from where you are, about eight miles southwest of the river valley are a series of he rocky hills, which it must be there somewhere. Uh, so, uh, let me see what part of the procedures we are going to do. We're going to check for monsters. And there are none. Already did the weather. No one's trying to hunt or forage for food today. Right? Um, and being on horseback, it takes you no time at all to make it down to the mounds. Now, you make it to these mounds, 
and uh, there's an interesting problem. Um, there's just hills everywhere. Um, but the elves can make a two and six check because this is magical. And I will also grant that to Tharnland. Where is his D6? I guess he's a monster stat block, so I'll have to just roll it manually. He failed and you failed. Okay. So you search around and can't seem to find it. Can't seem to find um, it. You are also rangers. So I'll grant you a second D6. Um, if you're trying to look for tracks, I like to try to find it that way. And you don't. And time passes. And um, this takes several hours. Um, and I'm going to roll a d6 to see if they notice. Okay, so about half the day has passed. And you haven't found it. You all have been searching around in these hills. What do you do? Um, well, okay. So is it getting late? I gotta keep searching. It's, uh, it's probably like 3, 4 p.m. right now. Okay, well, somewhere down here, there's a hole with monsters coming out, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. Um, you, the, you elves are the experts. Is there no luck? So, um, I mean, any other ideas for how to track this place down? Any, any any monster tracks or anything that we could find? Any signs of activity? I don't know. Which, I assume you, this you is all in the trying, checks that you're way. already looking. Yeah, for. you can try again. Yeah, it'll take yeah, several hours. would elvish mounds to like, do all the mounds look like elvish mounds? Do elves... I, I'm sorry, it's not an elvish mound. It's a, okay. it's a dwarven mound. Um, dwarven mound. Okay, and they all look like dwarven mounds, and, don't and, they? But she did tell you that it had dwarven magic, which concealed it. And Tharnland yeah. wouldn't be able to pick up on magic of dwarves? So far, you all have failed, but you can keep trying by dice, or if you have, like, a clever solution, you could deploy that and maybe you'd do it faster. Yeah. Is there any spot that looks just way too pristine? Let me look. Uh, you see around you stands of trees among the hillsides consisting mostly of pines and yews. The hills have bush, they're bushy. Uh, their rocky sides are worn by glacian. Um, glace, glaciation, I think. Um, it must be in one of these many hills somewhere in the area. Um, none of them look pristine. And there's no tracks on the ground to follow. If there are, you couldn't find them yet. Would we be able to pick up a smell of, like, decay or... Um... A smell of decay? Yeah, or would dead trees or dead things be growing near the entrance since it's kind of cursed? Uh, it doesn't look like... Let me see here. Give me a second, actually. So, it doesn't look like there's, like, dead areas. Um, that you can see that are apparent. But, um, except that you've randomly spotted it among the forest. It's almost like the ground itself is cursed throughout the land right now. But So you're seeing things where there's spots on the leaves and on bark and stuff like that, but not anything in particular. As far as a smell, I will say, and this takes no extra time, I'll say that you can do a listen check, but you're doing a smell check. 
Um, this is, I, because I, I don't know that you would smell this, so I'm going to leave it to a check. Is that a D6 again, or a would D6. that be? D6, yeah, and I think it's a 2 and 6. Nope. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't smell it. I'll let your companions, uh, your other elf, I'll let him try it. Uh, two and six. He also does not smell it. Goodness. Any other ideas, or do you want to just keep searching? Would Tharnland know what, like, what kind of, I'm guessing the door to it was built by the dwarves. Would he know what kind of structures or what it would look like or... Like, are we looking for a rock face? Are we looking for a pile of stones? He says, ah, back when I was a, a lad, they, um, they, well, they, at different times, they tried to reopen the delves. It was a failure every time. I'm ashamed to say that I've never even seen one. They're trying now in the Gem Throne Wilderness, actually, to open delves there. Who knows? A rock face would make sense, though. I, I if I saw the stonework... You may never see one. <laughs> uh, but I do know dwarven stonework. Never mind a delve. Or a... Uh, uh, what are they? A hold. Never mind a dwarven hold. Well, we still work stone, and I could see... I would know that if I saw it. it well, Thornland... If you had to pick a spot to build such a place from where we stand right now, where would it be? I'd be in one of these hills. It could be any of these hills could hold a mithril they'd crack the ground. We've been marching up and down these hills for four hours now. Something strange. Well, on we go. You gonna try to do the checks again? I mean, I, I don't know if I ever rolled one, but you said it was magical? Yeah, the elves and the dwarves can do this. Okay. But it takes time. Nope. <laughs> yep. All right. I don't think I rolled for Adelaron last time, so I will roll for him now. I don't think I rolled for him. I did Tharnlin, though. Okay, he fails, and then Tharnlin checks. And Tharnlin fails. So then what oh. happens... And then again, you can check for tracks if you want. Which I'll also... No weird sounds or anything. Just the standard nature sounds. Nothing that... You can go ahead and roll for... Did that go through or no? Uh, it didn't look like it. I don't know if it's glitching. Oh, there. Now it's going to throw a bunch of dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'll set that to the side for a second and answer your question, Ben. You do hear strange sounds as you go. Somewhere in the brush, you hear a... Tss, 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 like, in a very intermittent and not consistent way. Like a hissing sound. Does it sound natural or unnatural? Well... Um, sound like it might be blazing or like I'm kind of breaking air escaping. Uh, I'm gonna turn you up. What'd you say again? Me or yeah? What did you say? Again? Oh, so so you said a hissing sound. Does it sound like hissing, like an animal hissing, or like air escaping a small hole? Kind of. It sounds like air is escaping a small hole. In different places, hmm. a couple of different places, you hear. Like a pss, 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 like you know, and it's intermittent. It's it's not consistent. And you've heard it a couple of places in the brush. Yeah. Get a ten foot pole out and poke the brush. <laughs> Where the hear some sounds. <laughs> make sure. Okay. You get a ten foot pole out, and what do you do with it? So uh, kind of listen for it where I hear one of those sounds coming. I just like get the like some bushes or wherever the start just kind of waving it around, see if anything jumps out. What do you tell everybody? Nothing else? happens. You know, because they're wondering. Uh, yeah, you, you, it's been going crazy. He's like, y'all hear that? Hey, hold on, wait a sec. And he waits oh. for it, and then when he hears one, he starts kind of poking where he in the All general right. area where he heard it. 
Yeah, you 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 listen, you wait, you hear it, and then you get the ten foot pole ready, and then you hear it and you jab it right, like where it, where it, you do it, and then when you jab it, it, mm-hmm. sh- it shoots your ten foot pole back. Well. Oh. Okay, then. Well, that was weird. Um, so there's something. Yeah, I guess at least examine where the where the pole got shot back from. Did it sustain any damage, like char marks or cuts or anything on the pole? No, it just felt like pneumatic pressure was pushing it back. Okay. Mm. Uh, ben, when you take a look at it, um, you have to pull apart the brush, but you see uh, some mossy ground, uh, some just verdant ground, and then there's a stone. You can pull it aside and you see stone and a uh, about three-inch hole perfectly drilled straight down into the stone and every once in a while you hear you feel a like air shoot out of it yeah so then i will defer to uh, hey tharlin is is that make is that any dwarven he looks at it he's like stone technology you're familiar with he's like this is it this is a dwarven vent that means that it's here on this hill somewhere the entrance or entrances, um, but it has to be on this hill. Right, knights, ten feet apart, and we will sweep. Ah, oh, you're going to spread out, but with an eyesight. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, all right, now I'm going to kind of give you some options here. I'm going to draw. I'm going to do some drawing. Um, give me. Something like a red. Did it work? Yeah. And make it like that. And you have a mound. Okay. You are on top of the hill. Where do you go? Like, which direction do you go? Uh, so we'll start over here. Okay. But we're going to go from here to here. Spread out 10 feet. And then make our way this direction. And then if we don't find anything, we'll head this way and kind of do that same up and down, up and down. I'm going to check something here. Okay. Um, This takes a long time. So the downside to this is it is getting dark by the time you get to the east side of it. The upside is that uh, when you get to the east side... You travel 10 feet apart, and then one of your knights, like, does, like, a, <laughs> like a you know, a halt symbol, like, and is, like, like, you know, be quiet, and look at this. And, uh, when you, yeah, he points that, uh, on this hillside, on this side, there's torchlight set on one side of the hill. Is it like uh, kind of like illusion coming coming out? Uh, it looks like a static then... torchlight that's just flickering there on the side of the hill. Okay, let's uh, well, slowly approach, or should we not? Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to rest for the night out here unless we go back soon. I mean, do we want to try and find entrance and then retreat to a safe place to, to camp for the night? Yes. In which case, we might want to find out who, what this light is so we don't have to worry about it while we're trying to camp, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know, leaving a... I mean, if we, if we can sneak up as best as we can to at least investigate, and then if something happens, something happens, but I'd, I'd almost feel better knowing what, what it is than just leaving it while we try and rest with somebody, yeah, you know, it may or may not be helpful or friendly. When it comes to camping, uh, I... Um, I will, I'm going to, you can do it. 
you can do it, but I'm going to apply the monster rules for an adventure site. Uh, so that means that like, there's a very good chance that monsters will find you in the woods. Because these are, it's a wilderness teeming with monsters and you're not moving, so. So, yeah, or we could, it's because getting dark, do we, if we're, if we don't want to rest here and, you know, <laughs> I'm sure we can get monsters. Do we go back to Restonford? We know, it, make sure we can get back to this place because good chance that that torchlight is something we're going to investigate. That might be the entrance. It might be somebody who came from the entrance. But we're in the right spot. But at this point, do we even really want to start delving? We we got a lead, at least. Like, how far would it be to get back to town? I mean, it, Restonford, wasn't that like... The good news is you have horses. Close near? Yeah, so it, you can yeah. make it back. And, and in overland travel, not doing an adventure site, in overland travel, I only roll for encounters once. So I already checked. So you basically will just make it back. So that's pretty cool. Um, you have to do that before, like, sunrise, uh, or else you're going to take penalties for the next day for not having rested. Right. So I guess, do we head back to town now, or do we investigate that? That's the big question. It's only just on the when you... side of evening nautical twilight, like 9 p.m. right now. I mean, personally, I kind of want to know what the torchlight is, but... Like, is it another adventure out here, or is it a lure to catch adventures? Yeah. Seems kind of strange to have torchlight in monster territory. If we're heading in, like, if that's the entrance and we're heading our way in, we can camp at the entrance with, uh, kind of barricaded a bit. If we don't want to do that, we could uh, jam the uh, 10-foot pole in the ground and tie a little uh, piece of cloth to it so we know where the spot is. I say we investigate. I'm here, that's unless by investigate, find out what that is. With the understanding, we're probably going to have to go back to town afterwards, one way or the other. But, yeah. All right. Uh, you, uh, let's see, roll a d6, uh, bin. Good? Okay. Five. Um, let me look here. When you, uh, slowly approach, which I assume you do, I don't know if you probably use the elves yes. for this, um, you can... better move silently if I can. I don't know how if there's enough light to see by at this point. If it's getting hard. But... Yeah, actually, it's it's pretty dark at this point. I'll get darkness. Yeah. Um, and um, but in the darkness, the uh, you can more clearly see that this is in fact one of the entrances. Um, this is clearly a mine entrance. Um, and. Um, it's um, about 80 feet from the ground level down at the base of the hill. The entrance is um, preceded by a 50 foot diameter flat rock outcropping. It's rectangular with being about 10 feet wide and 15 feet tall. And uh, um, it's obviously cut out of the stone. It's an entrance. Uh, and um, in the entrance within it, you can actually see torchlight flickering. And you also see... Um, six humanoid hulking figures outside the torchlight, standing guard. Hulking figures, you say? Yeah, they're probably like, six, mm. six and a half, seven feet tall, very wide, bulky, and not human. Oh. Mm. Oh, let's kill them all. Murder! 
No, I don't know if it counts as murder. Could these creatures possibly be other than chaotic? So, do we want to start a... Um, if we... Yeah, we, we can try and take them out, but uh, that might put more on alert if we come back tomorrow. Oh, well, that's a, that's a good point. But then again, well... Maybe right. they're only out because it's dark right now. We know they're here, so we could sneak up on them think... tomorrow potentially. I say a we scale of if two we... to twelve. How friendly are they? <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, if we fight them, they may they're going to be on alert, and we got to either rest where there's more going to come at us, or we got to come back tomorrow when they're like on edge. No, it's a good point. Murder. It's been a long day. I think. We need to head back to town and and rest and come back here early in the morning, hopefully. Yeah, but be very wary that they'll probably have guards set up if they're still here. But at least they won't have search parties out for us. Exactly. All right. You. Um, it's no trouble at all. Uh, you do have to probably do some kind of trick to have the elves help and the you know dwarf and the. Hobbits help guide you all that cannot see in the dark carefully. Um, maybe you use a, a, a bullet eye, a bullet, you use your lanterns, you know, sconces and whatever you need to get back to the road. And then um, and then it's a clear shot to make it back to the Bent Coin Tavern late at night. Late. Uh, you, they sm- you know, he, he's been waiting. Uh, that's part of what the agreement is. And so he smuggles you back to the cat yard, uh, the, uh, the mound, they call it. And, uh, back to the bent coin tavern. And, uh, that ends the adventure for the night. <laughs>